Hey y'all, I'm back. I've been taking a break. We took kiddos to the lake to just celebrate the end of the school year with them. And so I've been kind of absent on here and Facebook. And so I'm, I'm back. I'm going to start talking about curriculum now with you guys so that I know everybody's starting to purchase. And some people are, are starting to wonder, like, is homeschooling right for me? And if so, I don't really know where to start. So I'm going to start from kindergarten and what we use then up until now, what we use now. So today I'm only talking about Rebecca. Um, and I'm going to try to wrap this up as quick as I can, so bear with me <coughs> through this process. So when you buy a Becca, you get um, some forms in your kit. I got a receipt like this, and it tells you what you purchased. Curriculum in kindergarten in 2017 was $257 for the kit that I purchased with the two extra items that I purchased. Could be different now, it may not be. Also get one of these forms that shows your child kit and whether it's manuscript or cursive. I want with manuscript, it shows what comes in it and then optional items. And of those optional items, I bought an art project book and a Bible activity book. I no longer have the Bible activity book to show you guys. It was just some coloring pages. Um, I didn't feel that it was in depth enough to show, um, to really get anything out of it with my son. So what was left over, we did not save. Um, it is a Christian curriculum. So if you are not wanting to follow Christian material, this may not be for you. However, it is not as in depth as Christianity as I have felt with other curriculums are. So it is probably very easy to, um, to skip over some of that if you're interested. But if you completely do not want Christianity in your curriculum, this is one that you probably do not want to go with. If you are interested in it but don't want a lot, this is probably one you would want to go with. Um, but yes, please do keep that in mind when you're looking at Abeka that it is a Christian curriculum. Also keep in mind I do not work for Abeka. I am strictly just trying to give out some information about curriculum we have tried. My um personal opinion on why we use it or don't use it and um, just help other people out there in their journey. So that is another form you get and then you also get this form here that shows what is in your kit and some supportive materials that you could have to help with your kit. Um, <clears throat> so, that's that. And then this, again, I didn't get the Bible, or I don't have the Bible book anymore, but this is your art project book, which was an extra, it does not come with your kit. Um, we did not complete all of the art projects, they're really, really fun, but we ended up doing a lot of stuff just that I found on Pinterest. But these are great art projects, my son had fun with the ones that we did, and we still picked through it from time to time. So, they are very thick material so they last well and on the pages they have a month to tell you like a good time to do them and you cut them out or it gives you instructions on what to do with them but in this particular one you cut it out and then you take this page out and you're making like a little fish tank and there's actually an example of the fish tank on the back. Okay, so there's lots of little projects in here. Some of them go hand in hand with what you're learning. Some of them go with the season. Some of them are biblical based. So there's like a little cross one here. Okay, so they're fun little art projects. That's extra, it does not come with the kit, but it's a fun little source to put with your kit. <clears throat> you also get a few books with your kit. I think it's like 13 books at the time of my purchase. I don't know if that's still the same or not. And then you get this book, which is called my Blend and Word Book. In the very beginning of the book, it had vowels. And then there was alphabet. Please keep in mind, I purchased my kit in 2017. So some of these things could have changed. There are blend letters that teach your child how to blend 
a consonant with a vowel. Or two letters together. Okay, and then as you get towards the end, you're making small words. It starts making little phrases that aren't words, and then it goes into making small words, and then by the end of the book, they're making full, larger words, which are very good-sized words for kindergarten. And then you've got these little books, and on the back of these little books, they have a date, the pages that they've read, and signature, so that if mom is homeschooling and dad's working or vice versa, um, or they go to grandma's or grandpa's or nana and papa's, they can take their little book and they can practice it and they can write it on there for homework if you want to include homework in your homeschooling journey. So this is the closest curriculum that you can find to match the public schools, in my opinion. <clears throat> so, in these books, there are, I learn to read, I do read, and I can read well. So, in an I learn to read book, you will find some ladders and little tiny phrases. It's not really set up like a book. It's more learning to read. Okay? And notice that their stuff is super, super colorful. And then you'll slowly get into a little bit bigger. You see how they're a little bit more on there, but it looks more like a book. So the children are excited because they're reading books. Then gets to be bigger paragraphs. Now I may not be showing you these in the exact order that they would be doing it because I just grabbed some books off my shelf. But notice that as the school year goes, their pages are getting bigger and bigger and they're reading paragraphs. Then by the end of the year they can read I can read well are the kind of books they're reading. Their paragraphs are larger and their words are much, much smaller compared to the size of the words in one of the other books. You can see the comparison. They were much larger. Now they're starting to see smaller letters because they're learning to read what it's going to be like to read a real book. Okay, you also get some flashcards, mini flashcards, alphabet flashcards. I cut my holes out and I put this in it. It does not come like that. <coughs> Get a box like this, and it is full of phonics flashcards. I mean, there's a whole bunch in here. See how many there is? There's a lot. Okay, and these flashcards you use your phonics program. I'll give you an example like shh, shit, and then I'll give you a whole bunch of words that start with shh. Okay, there is a lot. So like the uh, will give you a whole bunch of words that either start with the or end in the. There's also teaching tips on the back of these flashcards, if you can see that. Okay, not on all of them, but most of them. So that will also come in your kit as a teaching tool. Okay. Once your child learns all their files, they get this little certificate. Okay. You will get a whole bunch of little charts. Some of them you can hang up because there's nothing on the back. Some of them you can't. Here's one that says all about today. It has the days of the week and a few different questions to ask them and they point to the answers like the weather, how they're feeling, um, the seasons that they are, just a few different questions. And nothing on the back, so that's one that we put up in our class. You're going to get a consonant chart. These are all things that come in your kit. It is not extra. You get a number chart, nothing on the back, so you can hang this up and it goes to 100. 
hang this up and this is a guide for how a child should hold their paper and it also teaches you with instructions and stickers with extra guidance in your main um, in your teacher manual this we did not hang up because it is something you use regularly however it is back there's a back to them so this is one thing that kind of drove me crazy is some of these I couldn't hang up and I had to constantly take it in and out in and out in and out because they were front and back um, which I understand they had to save materials, but I would have liked to hang all of it up. This helped us with our right hand, left hand. <clears throat> so we set it regularly. Here was our chart that we hung up to help us memorize how to write letters correctly. We did not hang this one up because we did manuscript and not cursive, but they, it, it did automatically come with a cursive one still. Not sure if it still does that if you buy manuscript. We couldn't hang this up because we need it front and back. Here's your vowel chart. It also has front and back, so we were not able to hang it up. Okay, this is a chart we were able to use past kindergarten. It starts with counting by twos, and then it counts in fives and tens. This is something that you can hang up. An addition back chart. Okay, so those are some of the charts that are given to you in your kit. Those could have also changed by now. Again, we bought our stuff in 2017 to 18. In your kit, you get two writing um, tablets. <coughs> one is more just your tablet. One goes hand in hand with your phonics, so there's more sentences and words in this one. Whereas this one is more letters. If you do cursive, your cursive directions for your teacher handbook will be in your handbook along with all your other subjects. If you do manuscript, you will get a separate manuscript um, handbook for the teacher. So I will give you a glimpse inside of these. There's not much left. You can see where I tore out all the pages that um, we did already. So these are leftover pages. So because this is just the writing tablet, it was just writing letters. Okay, so this way. I love their writing program because it had these little houses. And so when you would describe writing M, for instance, you would say how you would start at the dot in the upstairs and bring it down to the downstairs, but do not enter the basement. And then you would you describe it as the levels of the house. You don't describe it as the blue line, the dot line, this line, the red line, because there's so many lines the children could get confused. So my son really, really enjoyed the houses, and he grasped that very, very, very well. Um, and he loved hearing the upstairs, downstairs, and the basement. And because of that, I'll probably buy these writing tablets again just for my daughter's writing. Okay, and then this is the phonics one. And you will notice that there's more like, sentences in here words. So you'll trace them and then you'll copy it under them. Read to see. Okay. Okay, and then in this program you also get some little games. So the games come with this as like a cover and then they're all behind it and they're in a sleeve like I keep mine in a baggie now. And then they come with lots of pieces that are like in a stencil and you pop them out. And I took popped all mine out and I put them in baggies with the name of the games on there. Like this one was Peter Rabbit. So I wrote it on here. So there's tons of little games. You just pop them out and it, I suggest putting them in baggies. You have all your games. Okay, and then your game boards are like this, okay? And you can play these whenever you want. And sometimes your curriculum will tell you, like, on a certain day that you do math or phonics or something, which game they would suggest you play as well. Okay? 
So there's tons of boards here of different games. You notice um, one of the things that Becca is known for is their use of color. They, all of their stuff is super colorful to drag your uh, to draw the, the children into them. Let me talk about the teacher manuals and then I will show you the stuff and then I will try to wrap it up, okay? So, this is what a writing manuscript teacher manual looks like. I flipped to lesson 21, so that's what I'm going to talk to here and then I will use lesson 21 in there. So, it will give you instructions. It'll give you a warm up. It'll tell you what materials you need, what to do on your board, whether you're using a puck board or a whiteboard, but I highly suggest using one or the other because you will use it for all of your subjects in here. It shows you how to write it and exactly how to describe it with the houses to your children so that you're teaching it, using their houses and correctly teaching it to your children, okay? It tells you which book you are using, like this one, the application right here, it says application. And then it's telling you that your child is going to be using writing with phonics. So they will be using for that particular one, this book. Okay. And then it tells you exactly what they're writing, which page they're doing it. And it's about 15 minutes long. Okay. So at the end of that, it gives you the next lesson so you know you're complete, okay? Very short and sweet in here. Now, that was lesson 21. I'm going to flip to lesson 21 in here just so we can keep it all together. When you go to a lesson... It has a big circle in here, okay? And it'll tell you what subject you're doing. In this case, it's phonics. And then it'll say preparation. It'll tell you all the items you need, okay? Your materials. Um, it'll tell you your visuals that you need. It'll tell you how to warm up and review. It'll tell you instructions exactly how to teach it. It tells you in bold what to say to your child exactly word for word. Um, it tells you application, what they're going to do, what books they might use, which worksheets they might use. And then it goes to the next subject, phonics review. So you're still in phonics, but you're reviewing phonics. So probably from a previous day. Okay, and then it says lesson 21 handwriting. I cross out handwriting because the handwriting in here is cursive. As you can see, it shows it in cursive. Okay, if you are doing cursive, you would follow this and your um, handwriting worksheets would be in cursive. But because I wasn't at that point, I would stop using this and I would pull this out and go to lesson 21, which we just did, and do my lessons. Okay, then you would turn over and your next subject is numbers, which is math. Same thing, it tells you what materials you need, your visuals, your warm up, your instructions on how to teach it, what pages they're going to go, the application of how they're going to do it, and how to grade it. Okay, that's it. Next is 22, you're all done for that day. So, that is how you follow the teacher, teacher manual. Then in the very beginning of the teacher manual, it tells, it tells you uh, parent materials, children materials, and it gives a breakdown of them. Okay? There's also a scope and sequence in the beginning. The scope and sequence, sequence excuse me, tells you what lessons you're going to be doing, when you're going to be doing, and doing them, and what you're going to be learning. For instance, it says lessons 61 through 90 is when you start reading in those books that I showed you earlier, the blend book and the I do read, I learn to read books. 
Before that, you're learning phonics in your workbooks, but you're never picking those books up. So this gives you a scope of sequence for your phonics, your reading, your writing, and your numbers, because those are your four main subjects. If you want to do social studies and science, you have to buy those separately. They are not included in your kit. If you want to do art or Bible, you have to buy those separately. They are not included in your kit. Okay. This also tells you a suggested daily schedule on how long they feel it should take you for each subject. So for instance, it says Bible, 15 minutes, phonics, 10, handwriting, 10, reading, 5, numbers, 10, phonics review, 5, seat work, writing, tablet, 5, skills development, 10, enrichment activity may vary daily. Okay. Then it gives you a sample combination grade schedule. Okay. And then there is also a sample of their homeschooling calendar planner. Okay. Then there's an overview of every single subject in here so that you know what to expect with every subject. And you get into your daily plans, which are what we talked about with your lesson plans. And we went over one, which was lesson 21. Okay, and then in the back of this, you have your appendix. <clears throat> and there's different things to help you out with teaching. I've wrote all through this because we have finished our year. And there's just different tools in here. There are songs to help with your teaching. There's some of those ladders to help with your phonics. There's a whole bunch of the ladders. We have report cards back here. These are extras that I had. Progress reports. Check them out. I mean, they are really, really in depth. You've got, I'm trying to get this as clear as I can on there. There we go. Okay, you got, it, it has like the lesson, the grade, Bible verses. In depth. It has the book on here. Very, very in depth progress reports. Okay? So. One more thing I want to show you, and then I'm going to let you know what I think. So, with this kit, these are some of the other books you get that I did not show. The Think and Learn, the Number Skills, and the Letter Skills. I'm going to show you all those now without the tops and backs of these books because I took all of mine apart and I combined them in this notebook. It says kindergarten, 2017, 2000, to 2018. And I did that and I put my son's attendance record in here that I did, um, as well as his vaccines, just in case I were to ever get audited. And I'm just going to flip through and show you. So just keep in mind that all of those books, those three books are combined in here into one. So that if I were to get audited, they're in order of their lessons plan, lesson plans of the full year to make it easier for whoever were to audit me to show that my child did complete kindergarten. Uh, because his testing didn't start until the end of first grade. So, you start with the letter I with a Becca. So that's the very first assignment. I'll show you that one page up close. This one. And then on the back, it says fill in the circle under each picture that begins with I. Okay? I can, there we go. And I'm going to just grab a chunk and flip as I go. So, let's see what we can show you guys. And remember, like, their pages are super colorful. Like, they love color. This would have been from their think and learn skills, as well as this. That's the think and learn skills. That's a phonics page.
Oh, you do a lot of handwriting. Notice there's time in here. So their program is very, very advanced. You do time, you learn money. Pennies, you go beyond pennies. You do some nickels, dimes, I believe. Yep, dimes right here. Here's your dimes. Skip counting. I felt like their program was very, very advanced. Combining money. So I was trying to wrap this at 20 at 30 minutes. It's 26. I'm going to go ahead and get my opinion. I'm going to wrap it up. So what are my thoughts on this? It's Christian based. Did I feel like it was as Christian based as I wanted it to be? Absolutely not. I would like to see my child pull, um, pull it in a little bit more than what this did. However, I feel like it is way more Christian-based than what you would ever see in a public school. So, that's a great thing. Um, why did I choose this curriculum? I chose it because it was suggested to me my first year. Many people's children thrived on it. They were super successful. It was the closest thing to what my brain knew was right to do in school because I grew up in a public school with traditional learning and tons of worksheets. If your child thrives on worksheets, they will thrive in this curriculum. If they are very, very advanced, they will thrive in this curriculum. If they do not need manipulatives and hands-on programs, they will thrive in this curriculum. Why do I feel that it's not right for my household? Because when I bought this kit, I felt like my son was super advanced in math, and it's his reading was delayed. And um, when you buy a kit with any program you buy, not just the Becca, any program that you buy, I have tried two, two kit programs with two different publishers. And I felt the same way with both of them. When you have a child that's stronger in sub subjects than others, I feel like it is hard to keep up because your teacher manual is going to say lesson 34 and it's going to say you got phonics, you got math, you got science, you got all these subjects. And when my son is doing so good in math, he's going to want to keep going. So I'm going to want to go into like two more lessons, but then he's struggling in reading. So what happens is I started at lesson 21, but then tomorrow in math, he could be on lesson 25. But he's still going to be on lesson 21 because I have to still get him to grasp it before I can move on. So then that was, you know, we started Monday and on Tuesday he's, you know, lesson 25 and we're still lesson 21 in phonics. By Friday, he could be on lesson 30, 31 in math, maybe even 35 because he was doing so good in math, but he still might be less than 21 in reading. And his handwriting could be less than 45. I feel like when you buy a kit, it is so hard to bounce between subjects and letting them go where they're excelling and holding them to work with them where they're struggling. I feel like when you buy your curriculum based off your child where they need it, it's so much easier to do that. So like, for instance, this year, this past year, his second grade year, I bought 
curriculum from different subjects. And when my son was doing so, so good in his math, it was a separate math book and a separate, like, teacher guide. So when he was doing really good, he was like, oh, mom, yeah, I got this. I'm, I was like, do you want to, you, you know, you want to do tomorrow's work? Yeah, sure. So we did, like, two or three days in one day. So when we picked it up the next day, it was, it, this was his math. Like, I didn't have all of my lessons in one. So it was so easy to just pick it up and then close it and come back to it. And then when he was struggling in his reading, we closed it and we could stay on it for two weeks if we needed to without me going crazy and feeling like, okay, this is so hard to be on lesson 20 and reading lesson 30 and math lesson 40 and this like you can you can bounce around and be on separate lessons based off how they are and it's great because now that he has finished his end of year testing his math scores like he is finished second grade and he's tested halfway through third grade his reading comprehension he is in fifth grade because I'm able to keep moving now Whereas if I was in this, it's hard for me to say, okay, let me flip to lesson 21. And oh my gosh, what lesson was I on for reading? Because it, it tells you all of your lessons for that day. Like they expect you to move every lesson together. And that's hard for me. It's really hard for me. So that's why I don't like kids. But if it's your first time and you don't know where to start, I think this is a good program. If your kid's going to excel, I think it's a good program. And if your kid loves worksheets, I think it's a good program. My son needs hands-on. He needs manipulatives. He needs to pick and choose. So that's why it doesn't work for us. So that is a Becca. Tomorrow I'm going to get on and I'm going to talk about My Father's World, which is another kit. Um, it's got a lot more hands-on. It's also biblical-based. But I will talk about that one. And then after that, I will go on and I will talk about the subjects that we use. Because we did that in first grade. I will talk about the subjects we used for second grade, which were pieced together. Um, and I will do that one by one. And then once I get all my school stuff in this year um, for my soon-to-be third grader, which is my son, my son um, I will talk about all of his stuff, and I'll talk about my daughter, which is my soon-to-be pre k -er, which is going to be doing some pre-K and some kindergarten. So um, be on the lookout for the videos, and I hope this helped. If you guys have any more questions, comment below, or the best thing you can do to reach me is to um, subscribe here and then hop over to our Facebook page and like it, and you can message me questions. I can answer anything about this curriculum or any other one. If I haven't tried it yet, I will find the answer for you. Um, but we have tried a lot, so ask me about it, and um, chances are I've probably tried it already. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe below. Look forward um, to, to talking to some of you, and jump on tomorrow if you want to see some more about my father's world. See you later.